Hi there, another cool Photoshop video. This time we're going to look at some quick and dirty photo enhancement. Okay, we're going to fix up a photograph just using some pretty basic techniques. Here's our photograph. This is somewhere in downtown Melbourne. It's not a bad photograph, there's a bit of colour in the middle, but overall it's a bit dull, it's a bit grey. Um, it really needs needs something to be done with it. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of layers. Just drag the background layer to the duplication button down here, and we've made another layer. We'll make two of them. Okay. Now this is a real simple technique for enhancing the uh, the photograph. The middle layer will change to screen, bring it down to around about 50%. The top layer will change to overlay and we'll bring that down to around about 50%. Okay, now there's an all, a lot more dynamism in the photograph already. If I turn those off, see there's the original, turn that overlay on, take it up to 100% and you can see what we've done. The shadows are too dark, there's really it's a bit too much, so that's why we bring it back round about the middle somewhere. Okay. Um, with the background, we'll turn that one off, I'll just show you the screen. See the screen at 100% brings it up too light. Now we use the screen layer to sort of help some of those shadows underneath the overlay layer. Okay, we'll just really we can adjust these two layers backwards and forwards until we get exactly what we want. In this case it's around about 50%. Screen off, screen on, see the difference that that makes? Okay. Now I'm quite happy with that. That's brought out the colours in the middle. Um, we've still got a grey photograph but if we zoom in see that the colours are a bit brighter. There's a bit more contrast in there. Um, the photograph already, just for those two extra layers, has made a difference. We'll collapse all that into one layer. Now it's time to crop it. Okay, now there's a bit of stuff over here that I don't really want. There's some um, lighting standards and a few other bits of pieces in the sky. And this this side of the river down here, it's on the angle sort of ruins it all. So what I would do, I mean you might do something different, but if I'm cropping this, See, I will actually bring that up there so we don't have this abutment here. And on the left hand side, I will bring it through so that we sort of we lose those things about halfway through this bridge base here. Alright, that's where I'd crop it to. There. As I say, you may do something differently, but this this is just an artistic thing and, and that's that's where I'd prefer it to be. Okay. Now, what's wrong with our photograph? Well, the sky is white, okay, the water's grey, it's still not quite right, but there's a very quick way to give us a reasonable sort of a sky. First thing we do, is we'll go up here, we'll open another photograph. Now this is one that I've used for another video, and you'll see why I want it in a moment. We'll just open this up here, see, here we have a sky. This is a much better sky to the one that we have in our original, so let's sample the light blue there and sample the dark blue up there and then get rid of it. Okay, make ourselves a new layer, get our gradient fill and change it so we're going from light to dark, stick the light down the bottom of the sky, hold down shift so that it keeps straight and we will draw ourselves a gradient. Okay, that may not look like much now, but don't worry, we'll, we'll fix it. Make it slightly transparent so we can see the background. The next thing we do is we will give it a layer mask. And again, we will get our gradient tool. And we will just apply the layer mask to that. Okay, so now we've only got our blue on the top. If we drag our layer mask to the uh, trash, and we apply it, here we go, layer mask is gone but we've got this layer, it's a blue layer. If we click it on darken, you'll see that it's sitting over the sky, most of the buildings have come through, but the buildings still have this blue cast, so that's not quite right. 
it's not a problem so the next thing we do is we'll turn off our blue layer for the moment click on our original layer get ourselves a magic wand and click on the sky that one hold down shift click over here um, I could zoom right in and make sure that my selection was really accurate but in this case I'm not going to it's not a major deal inverse the selection and then what we'll do here is we'll copy and paste which gives us another layer we turn off that background you can see that we've now got transparency where the sky was okay all layers on move the sky the blue layer below that top layer and there we go now it still doesn't look quite right because the blue is a little bit a bit artificial so let's just do what we did before we'll make another layer and we'll change it to overlay and all of a sudden we've got a blue sky that actually looks like it's supposed to be there change the bottom one to multiply and just see what that does yeah not a lot of difference but no that's I'm, I'm quite happy with that right that's the sky done what can we do about the river We'll click on one of our blue layers, duplicate it again, this time take it back to normal, and we'll bring it to the top so we can see it. Okay, there's our layer. See? It's an independent layer, blue layer, completely separate to the rest of it. Press undo, put it back where it was, and for this next trick we will need free transform. Okay, that's command or control T, or well, there it is in the menu. We'll drag the top down to the bottom, bring that about to there, that's actually about, about where it was, that's happy. And there we go. Okay, what we need is a blending mode, and this time we will choose colour. Look what we've done to our, to our river, our grey murky river is suddenly reflecting the sky, look at that, that's pretty cool. That's still on 87% that layer. Let's have a look and try it 100%. Might be a bit much. Zero. Let's try it. Yeah. No, I think we were right the first time. There we go. Right. If we zoom in, we'll see that we've actually covered the bottom of the bridge but I think that blue is a better color than the yellow that it was originally so we'll just leave it if we wanted to we could do what we did with the buildings we could cut that out and just you know get rid of that blue but no I actually quite like it like that so we'll collapse the layers all into one and there's our photograph it's already looking a whole lot better there's really just one last thing to do I'm just going to apply the auto levels and the auto color and see what happens and really not an awful lot happened so that's a good sign that our photograph is pretty close to optimal okay I don't always do that but sometimes I'll do it as a check have a look at the levels and see there's the full dynamic range okay zoom in we've got a lot of detail here I think it will benefit from a sharpening so we'll use the unsharp mask just to see now the amount of sharpening we apply will depend entirely on where this photograph is going to go if it's going to be appearing on newsprint or in a newspaper we'll probably sharpen it a lot more if it's going to go on a very high quality um, production we probably won't need to sharpen it anywhere near as much but generally that's about that's about right I'm I'm happy with that. It's sharp, it's colourful, we've got a, um, a blue river, blue sky, a nice lot of colours in the middle and that's basically it. Now this video uh, all up is about 10 minutes. Um, if I wasn't explaining what I was doing the whole thing could probably be done in three or four minutes. Um, that's you know a really quick and dirty way of enhancing a photograph. If you want to see more tutorials on graphics programs, visit electricartist.com. If you want to learn more about computer graphics and graphic design, 
visit learncomputergraphics.com.